Good morning. Welcome to First Congregational Church in Chelsea United Church of Christ. Here we are on a, a warm June 21st, and uh, we always say in this church, whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of life or faith, you are welcome here. Bienvenidos a todos a este, a este alabanza. Tengo un salmo uh, 33. Desde los cielos miró Jehová, vio a todos los hijos de los hombres. Desde el lugar de su morada miró sobre todos los moradores de la tierra. De la tierra. Él formó el corazón de todos ellos. Atento está a todos sus obras. El rey no se salva por la muerte multitud del ejército, ni escapa el valiente por la mucha fuerza. Vano para salvarse es el caballo. Logra la grandeza de su fuerza a nadie podrá librar. He aquí el ojo de Jehová sobre los que temen, sobre los que esperan en su misericordia para librar sus almas de la muerte y para darles vida en tiempo de hambre. Nuestra alma espera a Jehová. Nuestra ayuda y nuestro escudo es él. Amen. And in English, the Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Amen. And let's start in with our opening hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. Thank you. That was beautiful. That was all done? Yeah? <laughs> um, let us pray. God, we thank you for all who are tuning in on this worship. We thank you for allowing us to gather and for the strength that you give us as we go through our days. Bless Tom's hands as he plays and my mouth as I speak and open your words so that we may 
learn from your Holy Spirit. Uh, bless all the fathers today. And thank you for, and happy Juneteenth, which just passed, and happy longest day. Uh, we ask a special blessing on all, all the men who have fathered children or who act as fathers and who are in a fatherly role. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have a reading today. We're continuing in the book of Romans. We talked last week, it was, our reading was from chapter one and Paul laid out the thesis of kind of the essence of um, faith and righteousness, that righteousness comes through faith and not through uh, good works or working hard. Today, we continue now in chapter four. We're doing verses 13 to 25, and it has to do now with looking at the life of Abraham and how Abraham was justified before he was circumcised. And it's, so the beginning of chapter four kind of lays out the, the proposal that um, Abraham was justified apart from works of the law, which would be important for Paul in talking to a mixed Jewish and Gentile crowd. So here we are, 4 verse 13. The promise to Abraham and his descendants that they should inherit the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and may be promised to all his descendants, not only to his adherents, to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all. As is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he drew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he promised. That is why his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. But the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him that raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was put to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may you give us your spirit to be with all of our thoughts and my words. May be the acceptable. May they be acceptable unto you. Amen. So Paul continues on his idea from last week, and um, now he's using Abraham as a as kind of the prime example of a person of faith who was justified simply for reaching out to God. Paul goes back through the life of Abraham, and in fact, early on, before Abraham has been circumcised or, you know, before there even is a law, God says that uh, righteousness was given to Abraham uh, because of his faith. And the argument is a very careful one, uh, because Paul, again, is speaking to converted Jews and to converted Gentiles and to Jews. And within the Roman church, there would have been likely a, a pretty strong pecking order 
perhaps those who were circumcised, which is evident in the early church that they considered that a privilege. And in fact, even when Jesus walked the earth, the religious authorities considered it a privilege. And Jesus was constantly trying to get the idea across that faith and a right relationship with God depend on something more. And that's kind of our crux here, is that we all know the ways of the world. We've seen actually our society kind of turn up on its end in the last, you know, three, four, five weeks. We, through um, exposing a lot of what goes on with racism, we've heard deeper stories of how people exclude one another, how corruption can uh, leave people behind and perhaps our frailest people. We've heard stories of brutality. We see the push and pull that human beings exert on each other. Uh, God knows us well. And in fact, our Psalm is it says, looks down from the Lord looks down from heaven that our faith would be reliant on something like a competition to do good works. Are we still okay, Tom? Um, and Paul knows this, Paul knows this well. So let's consider uh, what Paul talks about mostly with grace. And again, heaven forbid that if heaven or a relationship with God or closeness or spiritual deepening were dependent on a kind of a competition of effort on our part. Where would that leave us? Well, it would leave me exhausted. And as I speak today, many, maybe many of you have had a rough couple of weeks also. Uh, at least clinically, um, tensions are rising. Families are bearing down on caregivers. Um, I, I'm just finding a lot more difficult behavior just on a daily basis. People are now starting to really struggle and argue in a very deep way about how to open up. And we're seeing a lot of inhumanity and uh, competition for grant money, uh, trying to move businesses ahead when maybe they shouldn't. It's all kind of a big rat race. And God wants something different from us. And so the purpose of Paul talking to the early church is to kind of disarm, disarm the powerful from dominating the race and uplift the weak and the ones who don't feel like they can fly so well. Because when the race depends on grace, it actually evens out the field. And those who are powerful in this world um, have to consider humility, consider that the whatever pedestal they're on means actually nothing in the eyes of God. And it lifts up those that are struggling because those of us that might feel weak in the world or sinful or forgotten or left behind have a loving hand extended to us from God in the action of grace. So that when we're covered with shame, when we feel like we've messed up on every front, we have a God who extends a loving hand. And in a way, it is grace that could be the only thing that brings humanity together. Paul uses, strangely and not so strangely, the example of Abraham. Uh, and that's the last message for today, is that this is a long game that God plays. We remember going through Abraham's life. He leaves, he leaves Haran at, like, age, I think we thought maybe he was in his 40s when he left his homeland and comes to, comes to inhabit Israel or Canaan at the time. He's something like 80 when God promises a child, when he makes the promise that he will be dis, uh, founder of a nation. He's something like 90 when he bears, uh, when, um, Sarah bears Isaac. 
he's even, he's something like a hundred when God asks him to sacrifice Isaac and then Isaac is spared. So it's, it's a very long game. And through it, Abraham has lived as a childless man, which was, would have been very difficult. And so we can look, we can look to Abraham and know that he was asked to do many things, uh, but that his faith really uh, won him through. And he lived his life bearing a child and uh, seeing uh, fields and cattle and good things come from God. So I think today, I hope this message finds you well. And if you are feeling poor in spirit and perhaps like you're dragging a little bit, today's message is for you because God is there extending a hand of grace. We need not fear the competition around us because it's not, it's not ours to fight. Maybe on a worldly level, some we will watch people succeed and go right by us. But it is Paul talking about how to have a right relationship with God that matters. And in that, there is no competition. It is just giving our hearts to God. Amen. Has, uh, the beautiful same hymn, uh, uh, same tune as the uh, National Navy hymn. And when we sing the National Navy hymn, I think of George Zardes. And today, especially for Father's Day, let us pray for the Zardes family with the loss of both George and Teresa Zardes about a year ago. And with that, let us go into prayer. God, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for this message about grace. We pray that as the weeks go by and we read this letter to the Romans, that we can understand a little more deeply from this great writer on how to interpret your gospel and the things that Jesus taught us. Help us to know that our lives are not a competition. Help us to refrain from the struggle that exhausts us, but to understand how deeply we are loved and how strong and how true the hand of grace is that is extended to us. God, we pray still for all of the concerns of our hearts, for the many people that are still ill, and for society as it begins to re-enter that we can stay safe. We pray for caregivers in the hospital. We pray for the families of the ill. We grieve with those who have died and with the families who are grieving. God, we pray as always for the leaders of our country and we pray for our local governments and our city of Chelsea that it continues to do the good work of delivering food and keeping everyone safe. We pray especially today for all fathers, that you bless those that have children and those that have taken on fatherly roles. We thank you, God, for the model of yourself being Jesus' father. And we pray that that can be 
a good and true symbol that we can look up to. Bless and uphold all the fathers with the world over. God, we thank you again for um, this message today. We thank you for our own health and our own well-being. And we pray for our own faith that we would continue to come to you, to pray, to listen to what you have to tell us, and to share our struggles. For God, when we get between a rock and a hard place, we often wish to struggle, but often if we simply allow some time to talk to you, the answer will come and help to give us the faith to know that in the end, all will be well. God, we humbly pray in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And as we go from this place, may God bless us, the Father and the Mother and God the Son and the, and the Holy Spirit, that we receive protection and love, that we understand grace better in the coming week, and that God gives us love and sustenance and peace as we go our way. Amen. Craig, I'm, <laughs> I'm just about to go live, but please come in. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. Oh, he's recording. We're recording now. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>